So if you haven't already, please check out my last video on WWE 2K23. It is my initial thoughts on the game after playing it for about six, six hours-ish or so. Now I've had a full five days, five, six days to digest the game, to play the game, to play every aspect. And we are now going to dive into the top five best and top five worst elements of WWE 2K23. So let's get into it. Hello and welcome to FTTR, I am Hugh McQuaid and today we are talking about WWE 2K23 because it is on the tip of everybody's tongue, the game has come out it officially, it had its pre, no, its special edition launch I think on Tuesday which is when I got the game and then the base game has been released as of Friday, I think, I think those are the release dates, it's out now is what I'm saying. And I've been playing the game for quite a bit. I've sunk a lot of time into it now, more than six hours, which is what was in my last video. So I'm a bit more well versed in the game. I know how it works. I know what I can what I can talk about more. And yeah, these are the top five best things and the top five worst things. Before I dive into that though, please hit subscribe. Please like this video. Please comment your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll try and apply to every single one of them. With all that out of the way, Let's dive into the five, John Cena style, the five worst things about WWE 2K23. So coming in at number five, we have the soundtrack. I don't see a lot of people talking about this, but a soundtrack in a sports game, whether it be EA, UFC, whether it be FIFA, is actually quite integral because you spend a lot of time going through menus and listening to the music, particularly in like a My GM mode or universe mode. There's a lot of time spent on the menus and I don't think the soundtrack hits very hard. It's not hashtag even stronger. Like last year's, I really dug. I think there were a lot of good songs on there. I'm a bit of a Machine Gun Kelly fan. Please don't unsubscribe. I like Kenny Hoopla's song, Hollywood Sucks. That was a really good bop. But some of the songs on here, I'm just like, this does not get me excited to play this game. Like, you load up menu, and what the songs just aren't catchy. They aren't that upbeat. It's not really to my vibe. So, it's just a bit underwhelming. There's only 10 songs on the soundtrack, so you hear the same song a lot, unless you put on all of the Superstars entrance music as well, which is what I recommend doing, because there's a lot of good bops in there as well and it shakes up a little bit having this few songs that get cycled in and in and in and out it's not fun to listen to and it gets a little bit grating after a while coming in at number four we have the lack of arenas now this isn't necessarily 2k 2023 20, specific because i feel like there's been a lack of arenas for a while in the 2K games, and I get the excuse. We've got community creations. People can create their arenas, they can do what they want. I think that is not a good excuse anymore because granted there's more arenas here than the, there was before, but it's it, there's so many WWE arenas. There's so many. They've got the entire backlog of WWE shows, the entire backlog of um, WCW shows, the entire backlog of ECW shows, they have got so much under that umbrella that they should be pumping out more arenas than what we get. You get the standard year, you get some that have been there for ages, like SummerSlam 88 is still in there, but and then you get the showcase specific ones. There's just not a lot of them. Um, there is variety, but there can, there can be more. Come on, you can add more arenas to the game and make the, the flavour a little bit more. Have some more ECW arenas, different eras, you know. Help OVW, I don't believe, is in the game. I haven't seen OVW in the game unless it's on a community creations. But OVW is referenced in the showcase mode, and that's nowhere to be seen. That would have been a nice inclusion. I just feel like they're missing a lot of arenas throughout WWE's history within the game. And arenas, they really... They spice up the life. Like the Spice Girl said, it spices up your life. So I think it's a big missed opportunity to not include more arenas in the base game. Coming in at number three, again, 
not a 2K23 sort of specific thing here. It's more of an industry thing, and that is that there are key players locked behind the paywall of the season pass. And who are the key players? I'm not just talking about the likes of Bray Wyatt, who's a part of the season pass, the likes of the club, who are a part of the season pass, pretty deadly a part of the season pass, but also guys like OVW Randy Orton, OVW Batista, Leviathan, Prototype, that kind of thing, they're all locked behind a paywall as well, which sucks because it's it's referenced a lot in the showcase mode. If like you should be allowed to have that in the game without paying out some extra money for for you know something that should be included in the base game. You they reference it all the time in the showcase mode. And I don't like the idea of having to pay an extra like 17 quid to get the Leviathan skin and the Brock Lesnar skin and stuff like that. It should just, should just be in the base game at that rate. So, yeah, industry at large, DLC, not a massive fan of it. And this is, like every season pass, a little bit egregious that they've missed some of these guys out. Coming in at number two, we have the Bane of everyone's life if you play a WWE 2K game, and that is wonky collision detection. Now, every wrestling game has always had a bit of hit and miss collision de detection. You'll go for a springboard mood, you'll clip them, and they will do a goddamn somersault or something. You will, the, oh my God, right, okay. The Irish whips, the Irish whip moves, how many times, maybe this is just me, being a shit player, but if I am, call me out in the comments, please. But trying to hit Irish whip grapples and just that every time, not being able to get those timings right, always clipping, knocking into the person, and it breaks up the flow of the game quite a lot. Particularly in war games, it can get a bit iffy. Stuff like the, um, Hulk Hogan's leg drop, where he runs against the rope, can easily just be stopped by someone accidentally walking in the way. Edge's spear from the corner. All the corner moves and stuff can just be, like, it breaks up the flow when someone just stands in front, and then they just sort of do the thing and shake off the move. That breaks the immersion quite a bit. I, w I hope they can find a way to fix those in future installments because it's really quite annoying <laughs> at this point and i hope yeah i hope it's sorted down the line and coming in at number one after spending you know six days with 2k23 really really enjoying it there's there's only one one issue that plagues the game and that is bugs there's a lot of bugs in this game, whether it be, as I said, collision detection bugs and chairs wobbling around, whether it be people getting stuck outside of the um, the barricade, whether it be um, tables throwing themselves around about the place, it's not as polished as it should be for a big AAA release and yeah it really does break the immersion considering the gameplay and the grappling is so good some of the bugs some of the slicing through objects slicing through people gets it, it just chips away you're like oh it's like it could be so good you just need this little bit more polish a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more and yeah so that's the big issue with the game it's just bugs bugs and that's not a thing isolated to this game it's isolated to AAA games as a whole sometimes they're not polished as they should be and yeah that's that's what I have to say about the worst the five worst things about WWE 2k23 we've got the negative out of the way should we dive into the good stuff let's dive into the good stuff so coming in at number five is the fifth best thing about WWE 2K23, and I cannot say this enough, the overall gameplay is sick. The overall gameplay and the gameplay tweaks and additions that they have added, such as the pinfall mechanic, which I love. I really do love that. It's it's stressful. It gives me anxiety. 
but that's a good thing because it adds to the drama of a match. I really, really like how they've, it seems like they've improved rope breaks as well because a lot of the time when I was playing older 2K games, I'd be right near the ropes and there's no way I can grab the ropes at all. It just, it wasn't an option. So now it seems when you're positioned in the right way, you definitely will get a rope break, which again, adds to the realism as to the drama of the match. Stuff like people tag teaming in the Royal Rumble. It's really, really fun. When you see the bloodline and stuff working together in the Rumble, works really well. There's a lot of little minute details that they've added that really make the game soar. And yeah, I really, really love a lot of the additions that they've made in terms of gameplay mechanics. <laughs> Coming in at number four, we have my GM mode. I really, really love my GM mode, especially the additions that they've made. Like, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned this. You can play as WCW. You can play as Bischoff. That's cool. You can get all these legends and stuff like that signing to your your brand as WCW. That's really cool. Four way. Um, my GM mode makes it even harder because I suck at my GM mode. I absolutely suck at it. But it's fun to play. Booking your stories, booking your intercontinental matches, your US matches, your tag team feuds as well. They've really added in these little details that just flesh out my GM mode overall. All the power cards are good. All the perks are good. You, it's just a really, really fun mode. And it's so good <laughs> that it's finally in a 2K game. It was in 2K22. My GM mode is back, baby. And I love it. It's so good. <laughs> Coming in at number three, we have the graphics slash, put a big, big, big old slash in there, the character models. This is probably the prettiest WWE game we have ever seen, and that includes the likes of WWE All Stars, which was very pretty and very hard on the eyes. But I really love the way this game looks. People like Rhea Ripley look great, Hollywood Hogan looks great, Brock looks great. He looks really good. There's a lot of character models here that all look fantastic. And there's no duds. Like, I'm pretty sure last year, I think it was Scarlet, did not look good <laughs> in the slightest. I have yet to see one where I'm like, ooh, God. Point them out to me in the comments. But I really enjoy the way this game looks. The arenas look really good. Every stage, every set looks fantastic and authentic and the entrances are really really solid really showcase the superstars and how they enter so yeah no qualms whatsoever about the presentation in this game it feels like you're watching a premium live event or an episode of monday night raw which is all we can hope for with a wwe game coming in at number two I have officially completed the showcase mode and I would like to say showcase mode is goddamn fantastic. I love 2K showcase. Asterix, this is the tiniest nitpick that I'm going to rant, rant about now. Why wasn't it in chronological order? If someone can explain to me why they didn't have showcase in chronological order, then I will, what, eat... What have I got on my desk? I will eat this empty can of Iron Brew if someone can tell me why they put the showcase not in chronological order. It made zero sense to me. Because then you'd end with Roman, which makes it even weirder. I don't know why they've done it this way, but alas, alas, rant over. It's an incredible showcase mode. The documentary style presentation by Cena, flawless, absolutely flawless. Really love that stuff. The matches overall are challenging to an extent if you crank up that difficulty. And just the, the through line of Cena's career, because he's had such an illustrious career, is great. And no spoilers here. The post matches, once you beat the final, final showcase match, are so fun they are 
one of the best parts about Showcase. You beat them and you unlock these three bonus matches, which are both hilarious, difficult, and fun. So yeah, I really love the Showcase mode. It's one of my favorites that 2K have ever done. Highly recommend checking out the game and checking out this mode straight away. And coming in at number one, the best thing about WWE 2K23, it can only be one thing. William Regal, say it loud. War Games! War Games is so effing good. I have been completely hooked on playing War Games. It's so fun. Everything about it, the entrances... The way tag teams work in the ring, the like weapons spots, the fact that the weapons stay in the ring, they don't like dissolve into thin air as of yet that I've seen, and you've just got all this rubble lying around both rings. It just fully captures the feeling of playing a war games, of watching a war games match, sorry. And I absolutely adore it. I think it's the best addition to a WWE game since they updated Hell in a Cell when they sort of opened up Hell in a Cell and that made sort of all the difference because you could do all these grappling moves outside and all that stuff when they opened up Hell in a Cell you could get weapons and stuff like that it's the best addition since that I love it I absolutely love this mode and if you're a fan of war games you need to check out this mode you need to check out this match type because it is flawless. I love it. Love War Games, and it is easily the best thing about WWE 2K23. Like I said, that's it. That is everything. The five best and the five worst things about WWE 2K23. And I shall be gone now. But be sure to check out my other video. Like I said in the beginning, check out my initial thoughts, my initial review. Please subscribe to the channel. I love you all. Thank you all for the support. Thank you all ever so much for watching my videos and have a nice day.